and I work in the PTAL Submissions Office. And I'm Scott Mandelbrot and I'm the Admissions Tutor for Arts. And I'm a historian and my main interests are in uh, 16th and 17th century intellectual history. So to begin with, can you talk us through the structure for the Cambridge History course? Well, candidates who apply next year, so to come up in 2022, will be taking the new historical tripos, which begins in that year. So the structure will, in that sense, be um, a surprise to all of us. Um, but it should be a good surprise from the point of view of uh, undergraduate historians, because people will be going through a course which is structured more carefully to introduce them through a series of outline papers and study skills papers to a wide range of history and to the way that historians work and have worked in the past, and then allow them to develop those skills with some more focused papers on particular topics and also to do some research of their own in the second year uh, before moving into the third year in part two, um, and as now, doing special and specified subjects which are based largely around the reading of primary material. There'll be exams at the end of every year, so there'll be part 1A, part 1B and part 2 exam in the summer of the first, second and third years, uh, and that's the way primarily that the course will be assessed, although a good deal of the content uh, will actually be assessed through forms of continuous assessment and the presentation of research projects and things like that. Uh, so it'll be different and also hopefully exciting for everybody to take part in. So the first thing candidates need to do when applying is to write their personal statement. What kinds of things do you like to see on a personal statement for history? Uh, well, we don't really use personal statements for very much other than an, to prepare ourselves for interviewing a candidate. So. Uh, the candidate should write their personal statement for the other universities that they're applying to. But for our purposes, what's useful is to see some reading or some historical topics that interest the candidate or some places that the candidate has been, um, some things that they've looked at in museums, if they've been on archaeological digs, those sorts of things. Something that can give us an introductory series of questions uh, in, in an interview and provide a basis also for something that the candidate wants to talk to us about. Great. And for Peter House, candidates will have to sit an at interview assessment either just before or just after their interview. Can you talk about how we use that in the admissions process? An at interview assessment uh, will be will consist of uh, some passages for reading or probably a passage for reading and comment uh, with a question to help prompt the comment. Um, and we'll be using it because we want some writing from everybody that we can compare uh, with all, amongst all the candidates that we have uh, and uh, because we want to see how you write under pressure and to check that you can read and write effectively um, and we might even ask some questions about it at the interview certainly this year with interviews being online I was able to do that and it was helpful to do that of every, every candidate. Um, but it's one part of the factors that we use to assess candidates. It's not the be-all and end-all of assessment, but it does allow us to compare people on a very level basis, and it's useful in that sense. Which brings us nicely on to interviews. Can you talk a little about the structure of history interviews at Peterhouse? Uh, well, again, we, we have usually have two interviews uh, in history, and we'd structure them slightly differently. So for one of them, you'd probably be given a passage to prepare, a reading passage to prepare, which again, we'd expect you to be unfamiliar with. Uh, and then you'll be asked some questions about that passage. And probably the intention is that we'd ask all the candidates roughly the same questions about the passage. Uh, and then there might be some more general historical discussion. And the other interview, um, both interviews you'd have two people, probably two historians from the college, interviewing you. The other interview, the basis would probably be any written work that you've done, again possibly therefore the admissions assessment as well, and we'd ask you questions about that and about your personal statement and try and have a more general historical discussion, probably focused a little bit more tightly on things you've already studied at school. 
And can you talk about what you look for in the replies from students to those questions? It very much depends on, on the student and the question, but um, normally we would expect people to be able to show familiarity with books and with topics that they'd said they'd read or said they'd studied. Um, we would expect people to be able to respond to new information that we might present them with about uh, those things, books they've read or things they've studied. Uh, we'd expect them to be able to reason with information and to respond to uh, alternative interpretations of the same set of information and explain uh, why there might be those alternatives. Um, so we'd, we'd want candidates to be familiar with the structure of historical argument, with the standards of historical evidence at some level, uh, to be able to be responsive to new information um, and to show interest and commitment in their historical studies. And then finally, can you tell us why you think students should apply to Peterhouse for history? Uh, well, Peterhouse has a very long tradition of having a strong historical side uh, amongst its undergraduates. Um, we have a lot of historians in college, both a lot of undergraduate and postgraduate history students and a large number of fellows with interests in historical topics. So we have uh, historians of late antiquity, so the Roman Empire and its immediate aftermath. Um, in the Middle East particularly, we have historians of uh, medieval uh, intellectual history and medieval law and politics. We have uh, historians interested in the early modern period, the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, historians interested in modern politics and geopolitics, uh, and in modern British society in college who would teach people if they were here. We have very good resources for studying history. Um, we have an extremely good undergraduate library, for, particularly for historians. So historians who come here probably wouldn't need to use any other library during the course of their undergraduate course. Uh, we have uh, also very good research libraries, the use of books and manuscripts which are made available and which can be used for historical projects and things like that, including the place we're sitting, the Pern Library. Um, we're very close to major university museums as well, which are also interesting to historians. And we're a short walk away from the history faculty, which is where you have to go for lectures and things like that. So it's a convenient and also well-equipped place uh, for people to come and study history. And of course, we also support historians in trips abroad and other research that they may need to do. Mm -hmm.